This is Omar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. This morning, I'm joined by Ring Magic himself after a few days uh, since the fight with Sam Maxwell. Um, really, first question is, how are you feeling at this point uh, compared to straight after a fight? Um, yeah, man. I don't know. Feeling... I don't know. I think it starts starting thinking now, the whole thing. Um I think straight after, I was a bit like in a daze, am I all, you know what I mean? Like still in shock or whatever. So after a couple of days, I think I had a chance to sink in. And um, I don't know, my feelings, I got mixed emotions about the whole thing, you know what I mean? A bit confused, a bit annoyed, disappointed at all, you know? So um, yeah, but bit, still a bit frustrated though, mainly though. That's the main thing. Okay. How many times have you watched it back? A couple of times, man, a couple of times. Um, over five times probably I've watched it. But um and for different reasons, you know what I mean? Like different reasons for just I like, watched it from a fan's point of view, judge's point of view, watching it, how did I think I did, you know what I mean? Um and to be honest, from watching it back, like even when I after the fight, I knew I won it, but maybe I thought it would be close or whatever. And I always knew if it had to be close. Like if I, if I left it close there's a chance to give it to the other guy, you know what I mean? That's my plan was to never leave it close. When I watched it back, like that was not close at all. <laughs> and I had it not at all close. So I was a bit shocked, even more shocked about the whole thing. Okay. When, when you have watched it back and scoring it as harshly as you can to yourself, how have you had it? Uh, give, him, give him four rounds. Give him four rounds, you know what I mean? Um, and um, yeah, like, I mean, I don't get how, they, how the judges came with the score they got. Hmm. Okay, so you'd have seen like uh, the outpour across social media, I'm sure, which uh, I spoke to you a little bit about straight after the fight. But as you said, you was in a little bit of a daze and, and uh, you probably weren't too aware of what was going on. Now you've had three or four days to kind of look at Instagram and Twitter and, and Facebook. Have you seen all the comments and messages uh, that come in your way? Um, yeah, I've seen loads and... I don't know, the support's great still. Like, you know what I mean? In a, in a weird way, it's, it's, it's nice because it would be the worst thing would be to have that happen. And then imagine that happening on a small horse show or something. No one would just see it or witness it. Um, like, that would be devastating. But the fact that the whole world or everybody who did watch it or knows about it knows what happened, then um, that's great. But then the, the shocking thing about it is, is even the, the fact that how many people seen it, it hasn't stopped this from happening. You'd think, um, on a wide, a big stage or something where loads of people are going to be watching a fight like this, like you, you find it hard to give a mess up on scores, let's say that, like, um, but it hasn't stopped it. And that's the shocking and worrying thing about this whole thing, I think, because it shows that it don't matter the scale of an event or whatever, scores can get messed up somehow, or people, someone ain't really watching a fight properly, or I don't know what's going on, you know. Mm. So, contractually, um, what's the situation with the rematch? Do you have any idea? Um, yeah, I'm waiting to hear more about it, but um, yeah, the rematch is there. Um, it's going to have to happen, obviously. Um, but I'm waiting to just hear the ins and out about it. Uh, to be honest, it's annoyed, bro, because I shouldn't even have to fight this guy again. I shouldn't have to be... I should be done and dusted. I should have passed the stage and I've been moving on to the next phase of my career. But it's like now I've got to continue the same chapter again. Um, obviously, it don't matter to me. Like I'm a true professional, so I'll be ready and get the job done with whoever they put in front of me. And I just look at it as more of a, just me gaining more experience for the next, before I go to the next level or the next phase. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. I know you shouldn't have to think like this. Any fighter shouldn't have to think like this. But going into this rematch, um, is it going to be in your mind subconsciously that you're going to have to put a, a real beat down on him, an extra beat down? Um. But regardless, it doesn't matter if you're mind or not. Like if I have to fight him again, you're gonna gonna have to. He can get it even more than last. So you know, but that's, just because just because of just because of what's happened this time with the judges, is that gonna be on your yeah, mind? Yeah, yeah, kind of is. Like it shouldn't have to be like that. Like that's the other side of it. It's like fight him again. Do I even want to fight him again? What's the point? If there's a chance it could happen again. You know what I mean? Like is is that gonna? What's the security of this not happening again? Where's my protection in this? Like it's it's a bit it's a bit mad. Um, fighters with, I don't know, big promoters or stuff behind them seem to be protected. But then, as ever, fighters will come from small shows, no 
back and or nothing to do with the hard way. I don't see how we're left out to dry, you know what I mean? With no protection, no one actually looking out for us. And there should be some there should be some protection for all fighters across this whole sport. There should be. Um I don't know, who do we answer to about this? Who 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 do the judges answer to when they do these things happen? Like they obviously I'm not saying no corruption or nothing, but they obviously have the reason for why they're scoring certain things. But shouldn't they have someone to answer to to allow their reason why is their their reasons for scoring different to everybody else across the whole world? Um shouldn't they have to answer for that? That's my that's my thing, you know. And why are we putting our life on the line in this sport for the entertainment of fans to not even get what we what our dues about it? Forget money, forget anything else. Like for me, this is about legacy, you know what I mean? And then I feel like my legacy's been tampered with now. Like I feel like my legacy's been tampered with for for what reason? For something what's nice to do like oh, I could go on all day, man. It's what it's, I guess. Yeah, you're right. Both fighters have to come out and speak to the public. Trainers have to, promoters, managers, but the officials never have to. You you believe that they should uh, answer to the public? Hundred percent. Somebody, somebody should have to because this, this can't keep going on. Like <clears throat> going into the sport, you know these things happen. I know these things. Happen. I've seen it over the years of stuff like this happen. And I never ever, you never even think it's going to be happen to you, if that makes sense, like, on a big stage. I never really ever thought of it like that. Even coming into this fight, like, I knew there's a chance that stuff could happen, but I had to trust in the judges and the British boxing, but I only ever, ever shown mad respect when, when speaking about the judging the system. Because I felt like, even in our in our, in our our country, we have, like, one of the best boards about, you know? The British boxing board, um, highly regulated. But then, I don't know, like... They proved me wrong that last that last fight that's on the decision. That's I don't know. I'm not, I don't agree with that one. Okay, well, listen. Uh, it's good to hear um, from yourself uh, after a few days. I'm sure we will catch up soon when you got more details about this rematch with Sam Maxwell. Is there anything you'd like to add before we close off, really? Um, I just want to say um, shout out to the the people, man, the whole boxing world, the fan base, to that because. Like they don't know who really won, and I'm loving the support they're showing, and even to people who like was against me and Maxwell's fans and that, you know what I mean? Um, even they're like they're real, they're real boxing people. You can tell because they're showing the right respect and showing, yeah, we know you won. And they've only been, I've only had loads of messages of support saying keep my head high and just keep, you know, what I mean, it's one of these things. And I just want to say thank you to everybody for the support and shout out and. Yeah, man, like, the champ will be back. So I can't lie, the champ will be back. This is just a little blip, a little step back. I think everybody has has them. Anybody who's trying to do something great has them. And you can't let these things define you or beat you. And I won't let this beat me or keep me down. Um, it's just a part, part of a test of my character. So, yeah, I'm going to get back up, go get my titles back, and then continue my journey to the top. Okay, Aki Manish Brown, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. And uh, as we, as I said, we'll speak soon, okay, champ? Rest up. I'm a brother. Rest up, bro. See you, bro. Yeah.